Hi everyone and welcome back to The Rocketeer. Today I decided to share everything that I know so far about adding aluminum powder and magnesium powder to sugar fuels. Back in 2020 I decided that I wanted to experiment with it. Aluminum is commonly used in APCP or commercial motors and I thought well why not give it a try see what happens. I started to do some research and found that there's not a whole lot of information on it. So I thought I would start with 10% or so and see how that goes. And then I found Sergi's website, and I'll leave a link in the description, and you can use Google Translate to translate the page into English if you need that. But anyways, I found that he had done some work with it, and uh, some things didn't translate well for me, or I didn't completely understand them. But I did decide to start with 15%, see how that went. So let's take a look at that test, and then we'll go from there to some other tests that I made in the following year and up to 2022. All right, let's roll that clip. Wow. Well, that answers that question. Yes, aluminum burns very well in sugar fuel. That was five micron aluminum. It was not dark aluminum or anything like that. I use this 240 motor. Uh, it's only a two grain motor and it usually produces around 30 pounds of thrust with sugar fuel. So yeah, that made a big difference. I used a number 12 nozzle, which is what I would typically use. And uh, it really scorched the nozzle pretty bad. And uh, I think the motor came pretty close to overpressurizing, although I have no way to measure that until uh, the spring of 2022, I should be able to measure that. But anyways, I called it Quicksilver because, well, I thought that was cool. And uh, I decided to run another test with a larger nozzle because I was concerned about how much pressure the motor generated. So let's take a look at that clip. Well, as you can see, I still have the nice flame, but the motor now has an anomaly. There's a slope in the profile in the burn, and you can see the motor builds pressure somewhat slowly and then finally peaks out. Well, this anomaly is going to be a problem in the future for me too, and I'm still working on that. But I still have that beautiful flame going from number 12 to number 15 was too large of a jump. Um, so I'm going to have to keep working on that, and I do. But I go ahead and launch my Scorpion on a 10% motor, aluminum motor. I'll show you that flight. And then after that, I send my Zebulon Pike, this beautiful rocket that was scratch built uh, on its maiden flight. And I encounter a problem. So let's take a look at those clips next. Come on. Ah, really? No, 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 no. Hmm. Well, that was unfortunate. I found out that at levels of 10% or less, the aluminum powder seems to draw heat out of the motor or endothermic. I'm not exactly sure what caused the case failure, but it must have something to do with the slow startup. 
So I decided to run some more tests to see if I could figure out exactly what was going on. Let's take a look at some of those test results. Test complete. Well, that was a busy afternoon. But first of all, I'd like to thank, uh, before I make some comments, Frank Thompson for helping me set up the digital thrust stand that I cannot get to work. So yeah, thanks Frank for setting that up and making everything work like it should. And I'd also like to thank uh, Alex at um, Rogue Rocket Science, yeah, for providing the uh, spreadsheet, the thrust stand data analyzer, which is what I use to produce all the graphs that you'll see in the video. Uh, I just want to point out a few things and make a few comments and wrap this up. So one thing I'd like to mention is all the motors, the first three were three grain motors with around 200 grams of fuel. All of them had a number 17 nozzle. Now for a typical sorbitol or flexi fuel, I would typically use a number 15 nozzle. So they have a slightly larger nozzle because the fuel tends to burn faster. And I'll take a look at that too. So the last uh, test was on a mechanical thrust stand, uh, an older thrust stand that, while well, it still works, but not quite as accurate as the digital stand. And that was a four grain motor. And that had a number, uh, let me see, 22 nozzle on it, which usually I run a number 19 on that. So I'm going to separate the last motor test and talk about that uh, separately from the first three. So for the first test, let me get to the front page. I tested a KNSB aluminum at 10%. Uh, all these are mentioned in the video. And that uh, burned the slowest at around 1.4 seconds. And each motor burned faster. So I started with the slowest burning propellant. And uh, I probably could have used a smaller nozzle on that. But again, this is experimental work. I don't really know. And I don't want to blow up my hardware. So you have to start somewhere that's safe and work from there. So that test went very well. Uh, part of the reason that I dropped back to 10% uh, magnesium and aluminum was to see if I would still get the flame. And I quickly found out that if I want that aggressive tail, then you have to go to 15% aluminum to get that. So that was one of the first things I found out. But anyways, that test uh, went very well. And so the second test that I did was a KNSB or Servidol and 10% uh, magnesium. Now, magnesium is a mix of uh, magnesium and aluminum 50-50 uh, mixed together, and it's still uh, a metal powder. Now, I want to warn you about uh, magnesium. It's uh, very reactive, and I cannot guarantee any of these. They're all experimental. I cannot guarantee that any of them are safe to make. I'm not a chemist. I don't have a lot of experience with the fuel. There's not a lot of data out there. So if you decide you want to follow some of these experiments, just keep in mind that the safety is up to you because I just do not have a lot of data on them. So anyways, uh, that test went very well and uh, it burned faster than the previous test. I found that the magnesium does burn faster and that is something I expected. And with a burn time of 0.93, uh, that was pretty fast. So after that, let's see, the next experiment was flexi fuel and 10% magnesium. Now that burned very fast. And that test was extremely loud, too. That's one thing you can't tell from the video because it kind of uh, maxes out the sound, saturates the sound on it, and you can't really tell how loud it is, but it was very loud. It also had the highest specific impulse of 137. 
So with sugar, I typically get around 110, 115, somewhere in there, uh, depending on the configuration. So there is somewhat of a boost in the specific impulse, not a lot. Uh, I hope to improve that, so we'll just see what happens. Um, but that was a very uh, strong burn time, uh, 0.76, very short, and that was brief and powerful. But anyways, as I can, as you can see, the flexi fuel does burn faster than sorbitol uh, without anything in it, just straight up 6535. And if you add magnesium to it, it really burns extremely fast. So the last test that I want to talk about was one I actually had done previously, and uh, that was on the analog stand, and that was uh, what I originally called Quicksilver, and that was flexi fuel with 15% uh, aluminum in it. Uh, that was a 480 case, so that was a little bit larger. It had 260 grams of fuel in it. And um, that had a can of 227 to 261. The previous test had a can of 315 to 353. So I found out that with the aluminum, you need a higher can to uh, make a nice uh, ignition profile so that slope comes up quickly. You can see in the graph, there, there's a little bit of a step. And then, it, and then it takes off and peaks. So it requires, and you can see also from the burn, it kind of sputters a little bit before it gets going. And then once the pressure hits, it really rips. So uh, it does take more pressure to uh, burn the 15% aluminum, even more than the 10%. Uh, I have done some more testing on it, and uh, I'll have that video av available for you soon. But uh, those were very successful, and I can't wait to show that to you. But for now, you're just going to have to wait. So if you enjoyed the video, if you found this helpful, please consider buying me a coffee, help support the channel. Make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave comments. If you have questions, post those in the comment section. Uh, sometimes I get a lot of uh, comments all at once and questions, so just give me a chance to answer those. I try to answer every question that I can. Okay, so until next time, be safe. I'll see you soon.